used to allow the 10 minute videos, you used to actually be able to do up to 10 minutes and 59 seconds. Well, when I did my last video, I thought I could do 15 minutes and 59 seconds with their new 15 minute rule. Um, it turns out I was wrong, because, um, well, it took a couple of hours to upload my video, and when it was done, YouTube rejected it. So, this is my second try doing it, and I'm going to have to eliminate one of the things that I did on my last video. I actually did two short stories. This time, I'm only going to do one, because that's all I have time for. So, it's uh, actually an online book from a website called bookricks.com. And the name of the story is called Lemonade, A Quenching of the Soul by Matthew D. Smith. So, here we go. Nursing homes or residential care facilities, if you're faint of heart, are institutions. So are prisons and insane asylums. All institutions have the ability to take beauty away from you. People with names become patients or numbers, and in doing so, lose a bit of themselves. Institutions have a way of grinding extraordinary to ordinary. The first time I ever laid eyes on Hattie Mae, I could tell she was far from ordinary. She was a resident by choice of a local nursing home. Sitting proudly in her bed, she always greeted you with a smile. You felt welcomed by Hattie. She made even the ordinary who brought her juice feel special. I can say that, to my knowledge, everyone she met cared for her in the same way. Patty's hair was always done, as she called it, a perfect globe of white located just above her smiling eyes. Her skin was always soft and supple, as if she had just had lotion applied to it. But the thing that made her truly special was her smile. It was a constant peace offering, and an outstretched hand of friendship to anyone willing to sit and talk with her. As well kept as she was, you would assume she was the daughter of an aristocrat. But you would be as shocked as I was to discover she was the daughter of a slave. her personality. And as I learned from Hattie, not even a bloodline can overcome true character. Hattie was surrounded by family on our first meeting. For that matter, I seldom found her alone. Meeting Hattie was a true life-changing event for me. Her stories have lived within my heart and mind and I am pleased to be able to share this one with you. What is that smell, Hattie asked. At first I didn't understand what she was asking, and Hattie repeated her question. I don't know, Miss Hattie. I guess it's an air freshener or something. Smells like lemons, I replied. I had become accustomed to the scents and smells of nursing homes and learned that it was a better practice not to try to dwell on what the smell could be. Oh, she remarked, leaning back. I love lemons, Hattie stated. Do you? Like lemons, I asked. Hattie nodded her head and smiled. I guess. I don't like them in my tea, but I like lemonade, I said. Lemonade? Hattie seemed overly excited by the mention of it. And this being the first time I had seen her, I didn't know what to think about her response. Yes, ma'am, I replied. You drink a lot of lemonade, she asked. No, I replied, and quickly tried to redirect her attention by asking a question about how 
how she felt. Fine, Hattie is good, but I would like some lemonade, she said. Wouldn't you, she asked. I paused for a second and then simply answered, I guess so. We should get some, she stated, but lemonade is hard to get, you know. I was puzzled as I looked at Hattie and I thought of all the bottles and cans of lemonade in the grocery stores and convenience stores within walking distance from the nursing home. When I was a young'un, we had to wait on the mail to come in order to get lemonade, Hattie stated. I smirked and asked, you got lemonade from the mailman? Well, when I was a little'un, Mama would get money from her employer. Hattie drew out the middle of the word employer to demonstrate an obvious disdain. Mama would get money from her employer, and then we would walk to the river. Hattie looked at me as if I should have understood what she was saying. The river, I asked. Child, you had to go to the river. The boat would bring you the mail. The men sold things on the boat. The men would sell things, and everybody would go to the river to get their mail and buy salt, sugar, nails, pots, pans, and such. Hattie counted out fingers into the open palm of her hand as she named the items available, and sometimes they would have lemons. Oh, I remarked, and turned my head away for a second to a commotion happening down the hallway from where we were. Don't worry, Hattie May said. She do that all the time. I turned back towards Hattie and she continued. Mama would take them lemons to the employer's house. Now that man, he wasn't no given man. That man only ever gave his wife one baby, and I bet he would have taken him back if he could have. Hattie seemed mildly pleased at her remark and continued, He never would let Mama give nothing to nobody, not even us young'uns. So Mama knew not even to try to give us none of his lemonade. Hattie emphasized the word his. Mama, though, she was a smarter one. When Mama would stir the lemonade, she stirred it so fast, she always spilled a little on the counter. She would apologize for what she'd done, and then get the clean cotton cloth to soak up all that she'd spilt. Hattie stopped for a second, and with a big grin and a wink, continued. Mama would give the employer a big glass of lemonade. Then Mama would bring that cloth she cleaned out the spilt with to the back door of the house, and she pass it out the screen door to me. We young'uns would take turns sucking that lemonade out the cloth. We would pass it round until it tasted more like the last person sucking on it than it did lemons. Hattie raised her arms and slapped herself on the knees as she laughed. Betcha the employer be rolling in his grave knowing that. She continued to laugh the way he treated us. Heck, just cause he owned my mama doesn't mean he was no smarter than her. Owned your mama, I nearly gasped as I stated it. Yes, child. That man owned my mama till they said he couldn't no more. Hattie seemed calmer than I was, as she replied. Hattie stared at me for a moment, and then stated, Child, I am the young'un of slaves. Hattie's statement nearly took my breath away. I had never met anyone as old as Hattie before, but I had never considered that I someone so close to slavery. My thoughts were swimming in a sea of emotion, and I quickly blurted out, I'm sorry. For what child? Have you done something wrong? 
Hetty's face was kind and sincere. For slavery, I guess, I replied. Child, have you ever owned anyone? Hetty asked. I was embarrassed by our conversation. I felt like I was turning red as I tried to answer her. No, ma'am, I quickly replied. Don't spend your life trying to be held to count for what other men's done, she said. Because the only things God is going to worry himself with is what you've done. Had he seemed brighter or bigger than she had only minutes earlier when our conversation began. Now you a good boy. Hattie knows just by looking at you. Just mind yourself and don't go around tripping over yourself making excuses for others, she continued. When our time was over, I left her at the nursing home. As I stopped to buy some gasoline, I could not forget about the wonderful woman I had spent my time with. I looked forward to seeing her again as soon as I could. After I was done pumping the gasoline, I went into that gas station and bought one of the best tasting lemonades I have ever drank. So that's it. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that. I'll probably upload another video this weekend. I just got my webcam today. My new webcam, actually. So I'm thinking of doing a, uh, another thing with my guitar, another video. Um, if I don't do it this weekend, then I'll, I'll definitely do it, uh, sometime next week. 